uh, is my screen visible to everyone yes okay cool um all right so uh in our last lecture we had just you know gone through all the libraries uh whether it's numpy pandas matplotlib seaborn to just give you a quick you know uh, like a recap on those things we started off with numpy library and numpy was basically a numerical python library which was used for numerical ability we started create by creating an array which we got in return we just got a list of numbers okay array is nothing but a list of elements that we give to a variable so we are asking numpy library to give us an array of these numbers and store it in x and then when we print x we get this list if we look at the type we get something like this okay sim matlab just for example if we look at say a is equal to 1 and then we if we print a we get a equals to 1 and when we type a we get integer okay which means that a is equal to 1 it is an integer if a is 1.2 it is a float because it is a decimal number similarly here x where we have stored an array it's an nd array n n d stands for n dimensional array how many dimensions for example here it is a let's say a zero dimension or a one dimension so it is that that kind of array for example it's a zero dimension array one dimension array two dimension array so on and so forth we again created an array for that matter and stored it in arr here we have stored a zero dimensional array okay because we have seen that we have create, given no dimensions if we want to store anything in dimensions we store it in square brackets okay np dot array 98 we stored it next when we print x we get something like this then what we did is that we also looked at the arrange function for example we start we wanted to start a create an array which starts at 50 something which ends at 90 with a step size of 4 step size is nothing but the a difference and uh, we also mentioned that we want the data type to be float which is nothing but decimals and hence we got something like this if we would have stated it to be integer okay what's wrong np is not defined okay np is not defined for noisious let's import numpy again yeah and we, then 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 we get an integer type list we wanted to create an array which is full of zeros and what 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 should be the dimension of zeros it should be three rows and four columns and that is what we did here again we wanted a, an array which is full of say fours and we wanted it to be 4 by 5 5 matrix and uh, for example we firstly wanted 4 then we said fives so this is the value that we given here if you want to see what are the contents of the function you go here and press shift plus tab and then you get to understand what are the values you need to fill and then you when you scroll here parameter section you understand what exactly every functionality does and then we did some other stuff related to the same we started off at matplotlib library where we plotted age against the salaries for that of analysts and similarly for job titles versus salaries again we have plotted a line graph and with the help of line graph we were able to see the salaries and then make our data assumptions or take some insights and present the same we started off with c1 again we took this file car data and with the help of seaborn we we look what a pair plot is okay if we want to explore the relationships in the numerical data we use something called as a pair plot we have used a scatter plot here okay we also tried line graph but when with the help of line graph we were not able to exactly derive some good insights if you want to increase the readability of this particular code just go here after comma and press an enter this improves the readability the code can be read easily if you want to learn coding if you want to be a good coder or a good programmer firstly 
be a good you know practice some styles where you can write clean code and also you should be good at reading the code someone who reads the code well can also program well again we tried to do a pair plot here but now we did a small a minor addition where we also introduced hue hue is basically what it does is that basically highlights what we want in the graph so here it is highlighting fuel type if you see here it's highlighting the fuel type and then we can derive some insights we also started looking at the correlation between the other variables and here is the bar color graph that we have instead of having something like this a plain correlation we decided to plot it in a good heat map from the seaborn library yeah anot equals to true what it does is basically the numbers that you see here 0 0.24 0 0.58 this is basically a, because of anot is equal to true anot stands for annotation we are telling the heat map that hey we want annotations in our graph so that we know the exact numerical value as to what is the correlation then we plotted some line plots where year versus selling price so on and so forth and then we try to derive you know what our assumptions are regarding the same and that was it regarding uh, the uh, introduction to libraries today what we are going to do is that we are going to start off with zomato data set and we are going to learn something called as eda eda stands for exploratory data analysis okay as the name suggest we are exploring the data to analyze it we are going to understand what exactly the variable a certain variable means why is that variable present and uh, how can that variable add value to my analysis okay today we are going to see how do you explore the data or how do you basically get a hang of the data and for example if the management or your you know manager asks you that hey this is the data just give me some ed analysis on uh, this thing how do you proceed ahead with the data with the help of python uh, i hope you guys have the you have downloaded the csv files okay uh, there are two files one is country code and one is zomato file let's open the zomato file first i would also request that once you you know um, as i am proceeding with the same you guys also do it so you know it's like we are we both are in tandem so here what do we have we have a restaurant id uh we have a restaurant name we have a country code we have city we have address locality locality verbose okay we have the latitude and longitude of the location we have different types of cuisines we have the average what is this the average cost for two if you have seen zomato and if you have scrolled as always you know average cost for two there's this line uh, sorry this is all basic i they gave us a basic idea as to what will it cost us for example if it's 1500 for two if it's 2000 for two so on and so forth if it's 700 for two has the table has table booking so if a particular restaurant has a table booking available over zomato app or not has online delivery it you can understand what an online delivery is is delivering now so you can see that many a times you know when something is raining heavily or you know your nearby restaurants uh they you know they they sometimes you have seen that it just don't deliver you know your favorite hotel you want to deliver some you want to order something for yourself and you go there and then you understand that hey my restaurant is not accepting any orders today switch to order menu this is nothing but you know it's uh switch to order menu is like just basically you know if you are ordering something and then if you want to go to the main order page that is what it means if i am not wrong price range price range 
the aggregate rating we understand what this is rating color rating text and votes will come to here now now many a times it happens that you know when you are many times this is this is what happens with uh, analysts or data analysts or data scientists is that they directly pull the excel notebook into the jupiter uh, sorry the excel note uh, workbook into the jupiter and start coding the heck out of it uh, initially don't do that i would suggest that initially first just try to uh, you know understand the data in the excel workbook understand what the data means just get a hang of the data okay if you want to like uh, you know create certain pivots and get an idea of what exactly the data is you can do the same as well yeah so for example if you if you for example you know you can do anything like for example if you want you know for example if as a table booking or oh, sorry no not this one you can basically you know take like um, rating color for for that matter versus the aggregate rating for that matter you know this is the sum so you, know, you can just, like take an average for that matter and if you want to do all this you know you you can just basically run some pivots and then you can understand what exactly the data means and then pull off your jupyter notebooks so let's take our jupyter notebooks let's start off with our jupyter notebooks just a moment okay so we'll be importing the libraries that we'll be needing for uh, this particular uh, session and uh, i would also request you guys to start in parallel okay so firstly we have to do some numerical analysis um, and for the same we'll be needing the numpy library so import numpy as np we all, all will be also importing pandas because we need to read the csv and the excel files and for the data visualization we'll be needing matplotlib and matplotlib and seaborn libraries okay let's run it if you want to run it you have to click shift plus enter and that is how you run a particular notebook okay if you want to check pandas version okay always make sure that your you know that your libraries are updated okay because you know many a times all these libraries the makers of these libraries are all always you know uh, pushing some advances into the same so let's check what the uh, version of our library is to check the version of the library for example pandas library you have to just write pd dot pd because we have imported pandas as pd hence pd dot underscore underscore version underscore underscore and you run it so you get to know that hey it is my the version of my library is 1.4.2 okay now what we're going to do is that we're going to read the files that we have downloaded okay in order to read the files, I'm there are. I'm not actually. Uh, but I'm, it, it is saying uh, no module name matplotlib dot Okay, no worries. If if they are saying no module, uh, no module name this thing, then you have to write import. Sorry, yeah. Then you have to write pip install matplotlib. Okay, and you have to run this thing. Okay, you write here, run it. Don't put don't put a hashtag because hashtag is commenting write pip install matplotlib and run it once it is installed go to kernel restart the kernel and click on restart you can see it is saying connected and then it, then you can read kernel ready here after coming kernel ready you run the library again okay uh, if you guys want, let's let's wait for like 10 20 seconds and uh, we'll start again If you don't have any library you can follow the same pattern you can write pip install and the library name all right 
so now we are going to read the file names okay you have to make sure that your file names are also installed here or any in any for example if you have created a folder if you have created a folder here you have to make sure that you have to go inside the folder and you have to click new here and then you have to create a python file here not anywhere else i think we have a member okay all right so now uh, make sure that you go to upload here okay and whatever your files are click here and then click on open and then click on upload here you will get an upload button once you open the file and upload those files here and then we shall start off with this thing so for example just to give an example go to home go to upload i will select both these files i'll click on open and i'll click on upload because i already have the file it is asking me to overwrite okay so it's saying that you already have like file this thing if you want to overwrite i'll say okay overwrite upload upload okay you can see both my files are uploaded here in the very bottom and you can also see the the minutes or the time it was you know uploaded for example seconds ago four days ago running 10 minutes ago eight days ago so on and so forth okay and also see the strength of the file uh, the sorry the memory of the file like it is 2.26 or 8.8 kb so on and so forth all right so let us read the files now now when we want to read the files we will be using something called as pandas okay now but i have always said that we have to always store it in a variable i store it in a variable df underscore zomato okay df stands for data frame you will see that in many notebooks in many analysis notebooks they are always all you know they are always using this variable called df 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 is nothing but it stands for data frame you can use any variable of your choice i am using df underscore zomato because you know from my variable i can understand that hey this is the data frame of zomato so let us let us read the zomato file okay now how do you read that you write pd dot read underscore csv and then you write the file name inside it okay let me give you a basic understanding of what we have done right now we have took a variable df underscore zomato in pandas library we have asked pandas that hey pandas read a csv file for me which csv file this csv file okay that is what we have asked pandas to do okay similarly we also have another file which which is country code okay pd dot but if you see now zomato was a csv file now country code is actually an excel sx file that is an excel file so i'll be writing read underscore you can click on tab okay okay it is getting out okay fair example no issues you can write pd underscore excel and then into inwards i can write what the name of that file is and click tab okay so file wo yahan pe read ho jayega so i'm asking pandas hey pandas read an excel file for me which excel file this excel file okay all right now you can see here i have written country in uh, like just the c in code is capital and the rest is like small lower case and just one letter is upper case this style of variable writing is something called as camel casing okay camel yeah camel casing where no this is the this is something called as you know uh there is something called as pepet pepet style encoding okay pepet style encoding is something is if you google it pepet encoding you will understand there are certain styles in which you know python is written uh no this was this is the kind of uh rules not the rules but you know a, a particular pattern in which it is a healthy practice to write the python code so when we are naming a variable you write something if you write country code there might be some you know uh difficulty in reading then what you do is that you just upper case one character in the variable name and that is how you write it this is camel casing so i have written country code and let's run it now when i run it what am i getting pd not defined okay fair 
let's run it all right i'm getting an error here which says utf codec can't decode so on and so forth invalid continuation byte okay this basically happens where when the encoding style is not understood by the python thing okay uh so what you can do is that you can copy paste the error okay i copy and i paste it here click enter and you can see a stack overflow link any kind of error that you you know face in jupyter notebook for example you can see unicode decode error any error that you see just copy paste that and go to stack overflow link in stack overflow you will see that there are you know people who have you know faced similar problems and the the open source community has contributed giving answers to them okay so you can look hey uh, you can see the error means that your file is not utf8 a common default encoding okay so there is a common default encoding style which every file needs to follow okay maybe it's a mixed encoding file okay so for example they are the community is saying that hey why don't you try adding encoding one to your read csv okay it will not fail as giving you for this for dem kind of error okay so community is saying that hey why don't you try adding encoding latin one so let's add encoding latin one here okay okay let's see what happens yeah see the error is gone okay now that is how you can go to the stack overflow link and get your errors resolved okay now we have read the files now let's see the let's see what the files represent okay now in order to see what the files represent or just to get an overview okay we'll write df underscore zomato dot head what dot head does is basically it gives me the first five rows and all the columns from the data set okay this basically gives me like a you know a face introduction of the file i run the file and then it gives me like you know five rows 0 1 2 3 4 and all the columns like it has 21 columns and i get to understand what exactly the file is okay this is like the just how your csv file will look like okay for example this is your csv file this is how your csv file looks on your workbook this is how your csv file looks on a python editor or a jupyter notebook okay for example if you if you say that hey i don't want the first five columns i want the first oh, sorry i don't want the first five rows i want first 10 rows no worries just write n equals to 10 and run the file you will see that you you have now encountered with 10 rows okay 10 rows and 21 columns okay just write n equal to and then you can specify how many rows you want okay for time being let's keep it 5 by default this takes 5 so there is no need to specify n equals to 5 it will by default take 5 if you have anything like 5 and up, anything greater than 5 for example even 6 right n equals to 6 okay once we have opened the file let's understand what are the kind of columns that are there inside the file we'll be writing df underscore zomato now we are currently dealing with the first csv file which is the zomato dot csv and let's under understand what the columns are we'll do that doing df dot sorry uh, zomato dot columns and let's run it so we get to know that these are the columns in my data okay restaurant id restaurant name so on and so forth okay so i have understood that okay i have these many columns now if i want to understand the shape of the data okay a while ago we spoke something about the you know here we spoke about the dimension of data okay for example 5 by 5 matrix 3 by 3 matrix okay you have all seen here right for example 1 2 3 4 5 5 five rows and 6 columns okay 4 rows and 5 columns these are nothing but the dimensions or the shape of the data similarly if i want to understand the shape of this data i'll just write the variable name dot shape 
okay it tells me that hey your data has 9551 rows and 21 columns okay that is what it basically does okay any doubts till here guys no okay say i want to under i want to have more information about the data okay i am not just satisfied with this because till the, till now we have uploaded the libraries we have seen what kind of pandas version are we using we have read the files using pandas we understand what we you know took like a official introduction to the first five rows in our data set we understood what are the columns we understood what are the sh what is the shape now i want to dig deeper into these columns and the data type and the memory that they eat into etc uh, etc et i write df underscore zomato if you have if you just want to store it in df it is okay if you want to name this variable as x underscore zomato x y anything it's okay i have chosen x dot zomato uh, df underscore zomato so i'll write df underscore zomato dot info and then i run it it tells me that hey it's a data frame okay there are 9551 entries which is 9551 rows which starts at 0 and ends at 9550 okay there are in total 21 columns okay the non-null count is this thing when the non-null count is 9551 out of 9551 it is understood that there is no missing value or there is no null value in my in this particular column okay again you can see there is 999551 9, 9, non-null count no value uh, no missing value no missing value no missing value but in cuisines we can see that there are 9545 5 non-null values okay out of 9551 5, so there are there is some missing data in cuisines section okay and that is how slowly and steadily you get to understand what the null data is we also understand that hey restaurant id is integer it is integer data type restaurant name is object data type which is nothing but a string okay aggregate rating is float data type so you can see here and understand that you know you have you have three columns in float of float data type you have five columns of integer 64 data type and you have 13 columns of object data type 13 plus 5 18 18 plus 3 21 23 columns and the memory usage is 1.5 plus mb so 1.5 plus mb is the like the memory that is eating into if you want to look at the memory in detail you can also use something called as memory usage deep equals to true and this will get you like you uh, sorry this will give you a basic understanding of exactly how many bytes is a particular column eating into okay this is like the memory usage these are the number of bytes okay but uh, this is basically used when you are you know uh, downsizing okay for example if you think that hey in if your memory usage is much more 1.5 mb is peanuts but for example if this similar file is like 15 mb or 25 mb in, in memory and then you say that hey i don't want you know 15 mb 25 mb files i want to downsize it that is i want to reduce the memory usage okay i want to reduce the memory usage but not taking toll on my data what i do is that i downsize okay i'll, I'll explain you I'll teach you what downsizing is tomorrow where what we do is that we convert integer 64 to int 8 integer 64 means that this integer value is eating into 64 kilobytes of memory we downsize it to 8 we downsize it to int 32 int 8 so on and so forth and that is how we bring down the memory okay that is used for memory optimization okay now there is a practice in data analysis where if we think that there are certain columns which are not adding any value to my data i drop those columns okay now just just a moment now we are dropping the columns here uh, because uh, 
we think they are not adding any value uh, in real world when you are working in an organization make sure that before dropping the columns you have to understand what how exactly is it adding to the business and you should not just drop the columns just because you think they are wrong or you think they don't add any value uh, it will be great if you can you know, discuss the same with your manager and other teammates and only then you drop the columns uh, by after I, having a thorough understanding that hey these columns are not ad adding any value to my analysis and it's okay if I drop those columns okay so in order to drop those columns I'll be writing dot drop function okay okay dot drop now if I want to see the contents of dot drop function I go here and click shift plus tab and I understand that hey this is what I want I want labels access so on and so forth okay none whatever is highlighted in green here this is nothing but by default value okay okay so now we want to specify which columns we want to drop okay the axis and in place I'll tell you what it is okay now what all columns do we need to drop so let us write columns I cl click I shift I click tab and enter and I write what all columns do I need to drop okay because it is a list of columns I am you know defining the same as square bracket and because they are of object data type so for example which columns do I don't want I don't want longitude and latitude okay because I don't think they are adding any value I already have the address and the zone and etc etc so I don't want latitude and longitude okay let me just call it again so that it is easy for me to copy paste okay dot columns okay so I don't want latitude I don't want longitude uh, mm, okay what's wrong here shit just a moment here. <coughs> sorry yeah um, I don't want restaurant ID also it's okay I have the restaurant name I don't want restaurant ID now your views can differ from my views and that is absolutely okay if you want to keep latitude and longitude and you want to do the analysis on the same you will you say that hey no Chirantan, we want to keep latitude and longitude and we we want to use something called as geo pandas library and we want to also do the geospatial analysis using latitude and longitude it is absolutely okay I think that for as of now for this analysis we don't need and hence I'm dropping if you want to keep it please keep it that is not an issue I don't want the address also I don't want the address of a home it is going to I can understand it from the locality I also don't want locality verbose okay what is a locality verbose let's pull the excel notebook locality verbose is basically it is it is giving me like an in detail thing for example uh, you know for example century mall hey it is giving me like an in-depth understanding where it, where exactly the thing is okay I, I can understand that from locality I can understand that hey it is century city mall it is none it is it is similarly the same for just the locality verbose is a bit more in detail but I don't want it it's okay I drop it okay comma what else do I want I say axis equal to 1 now why do I say axis equal to 1 when I want to drop columns okay when I want to do any alterations now hear me out this is super important thing when I want to do any alterations with respect to column that is drop a column rename a column so on and so forth I always write axis equals to 1 okay this is the annotation when I want to do any alteration with respect to rows okay that I want to drop the rows you no know, drop the index so on and so forth I always write axis equals to 0 okay so please note because we are dropping the columns we are writing axis equal to 1 and we'll be also writing something called as in place equals to true now what in place equals to true means that okay now what in place equals to true means is that we are asking some uh, we are asking python to do 
the alterations directly into my data okay let me show it to you I run this thing okay and then we'll again see dot zomato shape okay so you have seen that abhi firstly what was our shape our shape was 9551 into 20 21 columns okay now we have dropped five columns and then you can see that there is an alteration okay there are now 16 columns when i say in place is equal to true what it does is that it directly deletes those data that those columns removes those column from the data set okay it not just keeps you know uh it it just not does that alteration for time being it directly deletes those columns from the data set okay so df dot zomato dot shape you can see that there are only 16 columns if i again check the columns you won't find these columns in these columns okay because now i have dropped and because i have used in place equals to true you can't see those columns here okay for example restaurant id there is no restaurant id locality verbose there is no locality verbose there is no lot latitude longitude there is no address so on and so forth and that that is why we use in place equals to true by the name we can understand that hey in that place please drop those columns all right now i uh we want to do some numerical analysis not using pandas but using something called as a describe function okay let me show you what a describe function is df dot zom dot zomato and i write describe okay what do i understand okay now in dot describe function you only get the numerical values okay you only get numerical values matlab kya which are only integer in nature okay float integer you only get the integer values okay that are there uh, in your data set if you can remember last time we had learned something about a box whisker plot okay for outlier detection and in the same we had plotted 25 percentile 50 percentile 75 percentile min max you know this basically gives you a five point summary and this can help you plot the outliers in the data okay q1 q3 so this minus this will give you the you know interquartile range so on and so forth this basically gives you like the you know the standard deviation the mean and the count and so on and so forth of the data so this helps you give you the basic understanding of what exactly your data means okay and uh, yeah so that is what basically you can help you understand from the data set if you want to draw a box whisker plot we'll draw it later let's understand the correlation between the data or between the variables okay for the same we had used something called as a heat map okay so we are asking simon library to you know plot our correlation using the heat map okay we are saying annotation equals to true and let's also give some line widths say line widths is equal to 1 let's plot it when i say line widths you know you can see this white color line okay basically the width between those two blocks is the line width if i say equals to 2 you can see that it's becoming wider okay so i'm asking the heat map to plot the correlation between different variables so we can see that you know where is some heavy correlation that we can find okay you can see as it fades the correlation increases as it darkens the correlation ship reduces so do we have strong correlation between any variables let's let's find that out mm -mm -mm. so aggregate rating and price range has like 0.44 but that is not a strong correlation that we have okay average cost per to and country code has no correlation you can see that you know as it proceeds to 0 there is no correlation as it proceeds to 1 there is there is a heavier correlation okay sometimes you also might see that there is negative sign this means that there is negative correlationship 
this means that when one value increases the other value decreases so we are not finding any stronger correlations here which is okay fair chalo no issues uh, can you just so, uh, show the coding for this uh, correlation yeah, yeah sure 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 so we are asking seaborn library so we are asking heat map from the seaborn library to plot a correlation for us usme hum log usko bol rahe that hey you give me the annotations annotations are nothing but the exact numbers or the exact figure by how they are correlated and i am also introducing the line widths if you want to in include more like more functionalities in sns.heatmap just go here and press shift plus tab and then you can you know give you know all these types of things for example there is something called as cmap okay so cmap is nothing but the style here okay anot equals to true x ticks and y ticks this but x tick labels is basically if you want to name your x axis and if you want to name your y axis you can scroll down and then you can understand what exactly it means and then once you understand you can again go here and then you can define the values you can also go to seaborn page okay you have a dedicated seaborn page and then you can understand everything in detail okay and once you have a basic understanding of this thing and then you can go and plot it here okay now always make sure hello Hello. Yeah. yeah so, me. can you please share the uh, and not is equal to true? Uh, uh, why we are using this? Sure. We are using and not equals to true. Basically, is basically that what we have done here is basically we have plotted the correlation between the two variables. Okay. We have these variables. These are all. Please note these are all the numerical variables. and i want to understand the correlation between these numerical variables for example what is the correlation between average aggregate rating and cost for two so on and so forth but how do i understand what exactly is the correlation okay i want some numerical values right so when i say anot equals to true the values that you see inside the block here 0.075 0.052 these are all visible due to anot equals to true okay when i say anot equals to false are uh, false are those values visible to you no you cannot understand what exactly is the correlation between the same and hence i write anot equals to true and those values are now visible now we also have to understand what are the missing values in our data okay we when we had <coughs> when we had plotted dot info we had something called as a non null count okay so there are two types in which you can see the missing values okay first is right okay this is the first type in which you can see is any okay let me type is any Or you can also write is null. Fair, chala, no issues. You can write that he give me the sum of null values inside this data frame. Okay. Just a moment. Uh, where is it? This was about cuisines. Some is it collection cuisines here? Okay, it is showing. Yeah. So I'm asking panda as uh, so, um, uh, this thing. I'm asking that he. show me is null is null is basically the function itself says that hey is are there any null values inside the data so i'm asking df dot zomato to give me null to give me the sum of the null values that are there okay so you can say that are zero null values zero null values zero null values so on and so forth but there are like what in cuisines you can see there are nine null values okay you can see nine so that is how you can understand the missing values okay but a healthier practice is to plot the missing values in terms of percentage because when you are presenting this data it seems good that you are talking in speaks terms of percentage you can't say that uh there are nine missing values out of 9551 rows okay this doesn't you know talk much about the data but when you uh, express the same in terms of percentage it seems better so let me 
assign a variable say perk missing data which is percentage underscore missing data df underscore zomato dot is null dot sum okay the similar syntax that we used earlier divided by the length of df dot zomato okay just a, just a moment what's wrong okay yeah What are we doing here is basically that ये जो sum values है, okay, whatever the sum values are, basic percentage. How do you calculate a percentage? Something upon the grand total into hundred, right? That is how you calculate the percentage thing, right? For example, x upon grand total, grand total into hundred, right? That is how you calculate the percentage. Similarly, I am calculating df dot zomato dot sum. Sorry, yeah, multiplied by hundred divided by the length of df dot zomato. Now, what is length of df underscore zomato? Let me show it to you. It is nine five five one. It is basically how many rows are there? What is the length? When I say what is the length of a particular data set, it not it means nothing but the rows. Okay. When I see what is the shape of the particular data set, it means what are the rows and what are the columns. Okay, so, so yeah. What does alien means? Alien means length. So that is the Python syntax. For example, let me show it to you. If l x is equal to one, two, three, four, five. Okay, I run this and I say, give me the length of x. So it is saying five. Okay. So what it says is that the, hey the length of x okay the length of x is equal to five, which means that there are five elements that are stored inside the x. That is what it means. Okay. So similarly, the length of this df underscore zomato is nothing but how many elements are stored in zomato. That is what it means. Okay. So we have written. The sum on the null values multiplied by hundred divided by the length. This will give us the percentage value. Okay. Abhi, ye data set ko how do I want to present? I can present it like this also. Okay. Percentage missing data. I run it. Okay. Okay. What is wrong? What is wrong? What is wrong? Okay. Okay. How how is that possible? Function object has no attribute sum. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Think that was the issue. Okay, yeah. Okay, I can present it this this thing as um, I can present it in this way as well. For example, I say percentage miss missing data. I calculate it in terms of percentage where I calculate my value into hundred upon the length, and I get here in terms of percentage. For example, cuisines zero point zero nine percent. Okay, or what I can also do is that. I can also create two different columns. Okay, you can also present it in this way. It is absolutely fine that you can see that hey, there are like zero point zero nine, you know, percent missing values in the data. There is also another way that I want to show it to you. I can create one more data frame. When I say data frame, it means rows and columns. Okay, don't don't be. Uh, don't think what exactly is data frame what is this gibberish word okay any collection of rows and <coughs> columns even your excel sheet okay even your excel sheet this is a data frame so data analysis ke language mein hum log is rows and columns ko data frame kehte hain theek hai when you have rows when you have columns this is a data frame okay similarly agar mujhe mera percentage missing data kuch aisa present karna hai management ko okay यानी डेटा फ्रेम के फॉर्मेट सो हाउ डू आई डू दैट आई स्टोर इट इन साइड अ वेरिएबल से मिसिंग डी एफ ओके आई क्रिएट अ डेटा फ्रेम दिस इज दिंटैक्स ओके आई आस्क पैंडास दैट हे पैंडास क्रिएट मी अ डेटा फ्रेम ओके वॉट डेटा फ्रेम डू यू वॉन्ट ओके नाउ दिस इज समथिंग कॉल्ड एज अ लाइब्ररी दैट आई एम शोइंग आई शो इट टू यू वॉट इट वॉट इट मीन्स and now i'll tell and uh, let me write the syntax once i'm done writing the syntax i'll explain it to you what exactly it means okay
uh, let me just sort the values what's how uh, sort values and percentage missing and let me also put in place equals to true mm, let me run this all right now what have i done here is basically i've created a data frame for my missing data okay you can see that there are rows and there are columns okay you can see here we have all the column names but now the column names are presented in rows okay when when i say rows in terms of data analysis we call it as index okay i have created two new columns that is variables and percentage missing you can see i have created two new columns variables and percentage missing and the values that i wish to put into variables column is nothing but df dot zomato columns okay so df dot zomato columns okay you have seen here already i have shown it to you df dot zomato columns ye jo sare naam hai columns ke that is what i have put here and they are stored inside the variables okay percentage missing i have created another column called percentage missing aur uske andar maine ye data feed kiya hai which is this thing the percentage data column okay so all the values that you see here are stored here and these are all the variables and i have sorted the values okay percentage missing when i have say i have sorted the values i have sorted it in ascending so you can see it's starting from the smallest and ending at the highest okay so these are ascending values in place equals to true i have already explained it to you guys what in place equals to true means we are directly you know uh, altering the data directly there itself in the main data set that is what in place equals to true means okay just just a moment yeah okay just to give you a recap again if you want to stop here okay presenting your miss percentage missing values here it is absolutely fine okay but and if you want to show like this and if you want to convey your results like this it's okay there is another method that i have where we create a data frame okay uh data frame is nothing but the collection of rows and columns similar excel sheet that you have so i'm asking pandas to create a data frame uh just a moment guys just a moment all right so i'm asking pandas to create you know a data frame which is collection of rows and columns i want to create one more variable or one more column which is called as variables i want to create one column which is percentage missing i basically want to show my management two columns matlab dekh ke pata chalega kaun se variable mein kitna percentage missing value hai so in variables column i introduce i put in values df dot df zomato dot columns in percentage missing i put this value which i found above which is the percentage missing data and that is what i store in missing df variable then in missing df variable i sort the values in i sort the values because i have not mentioned anything here it means ascending equals to true by default it will take ascending value abhi kaun sa value abhi kaun sa <coughs> value mujhe sort karna hai i want to sort percentage missing and in place equals to true that is what it basically means nothing else it is easy to understand once you do it on your own you will get a better understanding of the same you can also check the missing value for a particular column okay say if you want don't want missing values of all the columns you just want missing values of a particular column how can you do that for example df underscore zomato say i want just for cuisines i okay what's wrong i just want missing values for zomato data uh, for cuisines column in df underscore zomato i write is null is null kya karega 
मुझे क्विजींस कॉलम में नल वैल्यूज दे गया या कौन सा नल वैल्यूज है वो बताएगा बट आई वॉन्ट द सम ऑफ द सेम ओके बिकॉज आई हैव नाइन थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड एंड फाइव फाइव वन एंट्रीज आई जस्ट कैंट पुट डॉट इज नल इज इक्वल टू सम सो यू कैन सी हियर इफ आई जस्ट राइट डॉट इज नल ओके सो इट इज सेंग दैट हे जीरो थ्रो में फॉल्स देर इज नो नल वैल्यू फर्स्ट रो में सेकेंड रो में फॉल्स थर्ड रो में फॉल्स वेन इट्स इज फॉल्स इट्स मीन्स दैट देर इज नो नल वैल्यू ओके फोर्थ रो फॉल्स विच मीन्स दैट देर इज नो नल वैल्यू सो ऑन एंड सो फोर सो ऑन एंड सो फोर अप टू नाइन फाइव फाइव जीरो विच इज नाइन फाइव फाइव वन एंट्रीज एंड दिस इज अ वेरी पुअर वे ऑफ प्रेजेंटिंग द नल वैल्यूज ओके सो वॉट आई डू आई जस्ट पुट अ सम सो आई गेट टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट हे I have nine missing values in the cuisines column. Okay, this is how you can present, or you can also present it in this fashion, where we are writing in terms of percentage, hundred divided by the length of DF underscore zomato, and then in terms of percentage, you you can say that hey, there is zero point zero nine four percent missing values in my cuisines column. okay that is how also you can do it before okay. we ha uh, yeah please tell me the don't we need to write a uh, p r c at the uh, at the left side at the starting for using the percentage like we did before you can do that you can do that you can also so for example what we what i have done here i have not stored it in a variable yeah you can write for example if i if i write p p r c equals to miss data okay and i store it into a variable okay and i again run it i still get the same so maine yahan pe kya kiya tha i had not stored it in a variable which is okay matlab yahan pe just to you know for teaching you guys i have not like uh, stored it in a variable you can also store it in a variable you can name any you can give any uh, name to that variable so whatever we had done here we stored it inside a particular variable now this variable has this value okay that is what it means yes you can dedicate that stuff there is also before we sign off for the day i want to just teach you a very little uh, a small concept and tomorrow we'll start off from the same we do something called as renaming columns okay from the name itself we can understand that hey i am renaming those columns i okay these columns basically are tough to understand from the name itself many a times it might happen that from the name itself is delivering now switch to order menu aggregate rating rating color okay even when you look it it doesn't look good you have to also make sure that the data you are working with you rename uh, if you don't understand the columns or if the name of that column is not making justice to what exactly it has in it you definitely rename the columns okay so let me show you how to how you rename the columns df dot columns okay, uh, sorry uh, dot rename and let's rename it now okay now if you want to do anything with columns okay for example if you want to assign columns or if you want to rename columns please look at the syntax that i am following jaise function likhta hai waise hi likha hai hum log ne dot rename and curly braces uh, and crown braces i also introduce curly braces because i am dealing with columns okay now for example if there is this column called has table booking and i want to say that hey i don't want has table booking as the column name instead i want to rename it rename it as accepts table booking okay so what we have done here is that basically in df underscore zomato we are renaming certain columns so for example you say that has table booking you know it doesn't look good so let's rename it to accepts table booking now it makes more sense then rating color okay rating color this seems very like you know juvenile so let's call it rating schema similarly uh, i don't want it rating text okay 
I just want to keep it reading. Then say I don't want to. Uh, kidder kya hai? Average cost for two. Okay. Instead of average cost for two. I just want to keep it as say average cost okay I am putting underscores uh, for better understanding of the variable so that I under I read the variable name in one flow itself if you want to keep spaces uh, in between the variable name it is okay but it is not a healthy practice here you can see that you know they have used a lot of spaces it is okay it is okay to use that is not an issue but I am someone who is, you know, comfortable with reading the variable names with an underscore in between. So it's your choice. You can, if you want to follow it, please do. If you don't, it's, it's absolutely fine. Has online delivery. Okay. This is not a column. Doesn't look good. Instead, I'll just put an option. I'll just name it to online delivery. And in online delivery, you can put in yes, no, so on and so forth. Aggregate rating, it's okay. Aggregate rating is okay, but I just want to, you know, like uh, uppercase the R with an underscore in between and hence I write aggregate uh, rating. Now, last time I have told you that whenever we are dealing with columns, okay, we always write, act hey, what happened? Yeah, whenever we are dealing with columns, we always write axis equals to 1 and we are also writing in place equals to true. Whenever we are writing in place equals to true, we are directly doing alterations in the main data. Axis is equal to 1 because we are dealing with columns. Okay. Now let me show you the columns. You have seen, you can see now the columns have changed. Yeah, the column names have changed. So for example, has table booking ka we accept stable booking ho gaya hai. Yeah. Aggregate rating ka aggregate rating with capital R hua hai. Rating color ka rating schema ho gaya hai. Rating color ka rating schema ho gaya hai. What I have done is that basically, I have renamed those columns. Now if you, if you see again, you can see that, you know, average cost, accept stable booking, yes, no. Online delivery, no. Now when I have renamed those columns, now those column names now look solid. And we get a basic understanding. Rating color ke bale rating schema. If it's a dark green, green, so on and so forth. This give me like a basic understanding. Or uh, abhi ye columns thik se lag rahe hai. Uh, you can also, you know, if you want to completely rename the columns, it's okay. If you want to, tomorrow I'll also show you how to remove different characters. Now, example, for example, agar, if we had gotten data in this, in this, fashion itself for example average underscore cost accepts underscore table underscore booking but you know you don't like underscore you are irritated by underscores and if you want if you want to remove those underscore or, or if you want to replace that underscore with something else you want accepts hashtag tables hashtag booking so on and so forth how do you do that everything we'll learn it tomorrow because now i think we're past time and we'll be having our colleges and offices so what we have done now, we have understood what an exploratory data analysis means. We had imported certain libraries. We took, we checked what pandas is. We read the files. We saw what the files represent. We used head function. We looked at the columns. We looked at the shape. We looked at the information about the columns. We understand how the memory usage is in terms of bytes. Tomorrow we'll be also doing something called as memory downcasting. We dropped the columns. Axis is equal to one because we are dealing with columns. Axis is equal to row. Axis is equal to zero when we are dealing with rows or the index. In place is equal to two, true. Directly does the alterations in the main data, and you can see the visibility there itself. You have dropped the columns. You can see that there are only instead of twenty one columns now there are only sixteen columns. Uh, yeah, please tell me. A little bit about. Uh, before this one, this this one yeah so in this uh, we have used curly like brackets and then we have used a square bracket yeah what is yeah. the difference yes 
so when i want to rename a particular data uh, so when i want to rename a particular column okay or i want to introduce a particular column i use curly brackets here i am giving a, an array okay last time in numpy we had studied something called as an array where we are giving an array value yeah we are giving an array value so you can see np dot array it is a similar fashion okay np dot array we have we are giving a similar because here we want to give like a series of columns which we want to drop and we are not renaming any column or introducing a new column there is no need of curly brackets here okay that is the reason we have given certain columns we have given a list of columns this is basically a list okay because we want to drop certain columns okay we give a list of columns and how do you write a list you always write a list in a square bracket okay access is equal to one in place is equal to true we do describe function with the help of describe function we get a five point summary okay minimum maximum 25th percentile 50th percentile 75th percentile please note this is the 75 percent of your data okay we also checked correlation annotations equal to true so on and so forth then we came on null values okay we we checked null values in terms of percentage then we also found an alternate option as to how can we pres uh, present our missing data okay here because we have introduced new column names we are using curly braces okay we checked if there are null values in a particular column okay for example you can also use something called as votes and then one of our friends say, said that he so why don't we you know assign it to a variable we assigned it to a variable as well and then we assign something this to a variable we can say that hey percentage missing data is 0.09 percent then we renamed certain columns because now we are renaming again we are using curly braces and then we checked into the head we can see that all the you know, column names have been changed so guys that is it for today uh, thank you so much last two three weeks have been super hectic i have been traveling a lot uh, so yeah tomorrow we'll be uh, starting with the same thing and we'll take this further okay is it okay with you guys Uh, yes. will you be sharing this? Can you please uh, share it? Share it, share it with this. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll be sharing. I'll be sharing it right now. It, it, just give me like 15-20 minutes. I'll share it. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Okay. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much. If any okay. doubts, please let me know tomorrow. Okay.